during the siege operation around the city of Bastogne, Belgium. Various American Army units occupied positions around the city. It included the 9th Armored Division, elements of the 10th Armored Division, and then famously the men of the 101st Airborne Division. Now, as the various regiments of the 101st arrived in Bastogne, they were distributed out in a perimeter around the city. In this area here, the Bois Jacques, the Jack Woods, were the men of the 2nd Battalion, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. And when the men of the 2nd of the 506 moved into the Bois Jacques Woods, they had to endure the bitter cold of the closing days of December 1944, and then the opening week of January 1945. During that time, they endured the experience of occupying foxholes throughout these woods. Those men would then ultimately push out from these woods and push toward a town just over that way called Foy. But before that happened, you had several weeks of men experiencing the brutality of World War II combat and then also the misery and suffering of camping outdoors in one of the coldest winters on record in Europe. So 58 of us went in on the Bois Shock against a battalion of Germans. And that's when I used my 45 extensively because I, I carried my rifle up in my arm here to protect it because every time you touch it, it had snowed 10 inches, 10 inches of snow. And it was in these pine trees, and every time you touch one, it would cascade, and you know the top one, and then it got bigger, 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 and went down your neck, and your rifle, and your sights, and then your bore. And so I carried the rifle over here, and I used the 45. And it, because it would come around the pine tree, you could bend the limbs down. I did that. I came down on the limb, and I shook the snow was that deep on the limb, and I shook the limb, and I came around. And just at that time, moment, a German came around the other side, and I just jammed the. 45 forward and I up against his cheek and I pulled the trigger. It was, it was all at war. The significance of the 101st Airborne's defense, the battle uh, around Baston, was its indomitable, steadfast defense of a position. In fact, when General Makhalev replied to the German demand for cement surrender, uh, with the simple phrase, nuts, and the Germans couldn't quite figure out what that meant in a colloquial Americanism. It really, it really enshrined the American attitude towards uh, the, the war at that time. We weren't going to give up, no matter what. One of the best machine gun designs of all time is the Browning Model 1919 here in the A4 configuration and also the A6. These guns were used by the 101st Airborne as they defended Bastogne from the Nazi onslaught. The Browning machine gun is superlative and it worked even in the horrible conditions of the Ardennes of that cold winter. From a dug position in a wooded area like at the Bois Jacques, a machine gunner armed with the M1919 A4 30 caliber air-cooled machine gun could own just about anything within eyesight around him. A machine gunner from a position like the dug positions that you can still find evidence of today at the Bois Jacques, that machine gunner could direct powerful and devastating machine gun fire toward any infantry force that had to come out from behind cover to approach the wooded area where they were located. The snow helped to conceal these positions, making it more difficult for the enemy to figure out where they were and to stop them. And despite the fact that the Germans were trying desperately to move into an advantageous position around Bastogne so that they could break through the perimeter, so that they could move into the town itself and overwhelm the Americans that were still holding the town. Despite that, the men of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment were able to hold their line. They were able to hold that thin red line as it ran through the Bois Jacques and looked out across an open field toward the town that the Belgians called Foix, that we call Foy. The American Rifleman Television crew traveled to the Bois Jacques we saw the foxholes, including the one occupied by Major Richard Winters. After the break, the German siege of Bastogne intensifies. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. Just after four o'clock in the afternoon, 
on December 26th, 1944. An incredibly important moment for the Battle of the Bulge unfolded just immediately south of Baston on the road leading from that town toward a town called Assinois. Just outside of town, there is a little Belgian concrete bunker that was built by the Belgians prior to the part of the Second World War to defend the road network leading up to Baston. And paratroopers of the 101st Airborne Division were using that bunker. There were paratroopers in dug positions in the field immediately next to it. And these were all men from the 307th Airborne Engineer Battalion of the 101st Airborne Division. These men looked south across snow-covered fields and had been doing so for days. However, on December 26th, as they looked south toward Asinwa, they could hear the sound of combat roaring just a, a few miles away from them. And then ultimately they heard vehicle noise as the sound of combat approached their positions. For the combat engineers and the glidermen on the southern shoulder of the perimeter, they heard a serious gunfight going on, a tank fight. They heard uh, main gun rounds, they heard 50 cal, they heard German guns opening up as Creighton Abrams and his tanks were moving to their relief. You know, the, 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 the terrain there is, is, is thick, it's wooded. You know, you know there is a fight going on, a serious fight, and it's moving closer and closer. The sound of American main gun rounds uh, going off had to be just a, a moment of euphoria for those in that bunker looking down the road, hoping they're Americans and not Germans. At the spearhead of the, of the 3rd Army Drive was the 4th Armored Division. At the spearhead of that was the 4th Armored Division's 37th Tank Battalion. And among the armored vehicles of the 37th Tank Battalion was one M4 Sherman tank nicknamed Cobra King. At 4.30 in the afternoon on December 26, the day after Christmas, Cobra King from C Company 37th Tank Battalion, Combat Command Reserve, 4th Armored Division, drove up from the south in that direction from the city of Assinois and drove into the Bastogne perimeter here where men of the 326th Airborne Engineer Battalion were holding the line. When Cobra King reached this spot in front of this Belgian bunker, it marked the point where the siege around the city of Bastogne ended once and for all. The real significance of Cobra King making it into the perimeter there at Bastogne and leading in its convoy of tanks was to open up a path by which the wounded could be evacuated and even more importantly supplies and ammunition could be brought in to the beleaguered defenders. The gun on top of that turret was an M2 50 caliber Browning machine gun. As Cobra King approached their positions these men stood up and cheered because this was the moment that the siege of Bastogne ended. And in the end, Cobra King, with its tank commander, Charles Bogus, who had unbuttoned and come out of the, of the tank commander's cupola of his Sherman, with his arm resting on his M2 50 caliber heavy barrel machine gun, wheeled up to the position where the men of the 307th Airborne in Engineer Battalion were very, very pleased to see him. And a moment that faded into obscurity very quickly thereafter, but a moment that is nevertheless monumental because it meant that Bastogne would not fall to the enemy. It meant that the 10,000 Americans that had been struggling there would not become prisoners of war or killed in combat.